identified the differences between 4G and 5G which are the most important differences in terms of the air interface. Also we have been able to identify what are the common things that are present between the fourth generation and the fifth generation. And primarily we have said that the air interface consists of OFDM with access that means the multiple access is based on OFDM and there is also support for DFT spread OFDM in the uplink direction as has been there in the fourth generation system. Along with it OFDM is also available for uplink uh, direction transmission. And in the earlier lectures uh, we have described that uh, why OFDM could also be suitable and uh, the primary reason we have said is that when a user sends data in the uplink direction, uh, the user need not send it over the entire stretch of bandwidth and then uh, if it sends over a smaller set of bandwidth only 12 sub carriers let us say using one resource block, then the peak to average power ratio is not significantly high. In that case doing a DFT operation to spread and reduce the PAPR is obviously going to give some benefit, uh, but it is uh, not necessarily that the benefit will be huge and uh, given the extra processing that one has to do because if one does an extra DFT processing there is also some amount of uh, power and complexity that adds up to the system. So, there is an overall balance uh, which is necessary depending upon the application and scenario of deployment. So, there are two possible options which are available in the fifth generation, but it is highly compatible with the earlier generation system. So, we have uh, discussed uh, this particular uh, slide in the previous uh, lecture where we have described most of the uh, variables that are necessary and we have also seen what is A. So, in case of OFDM that is the uh, complex constellation point, if it is uh, the uh, DFT spread it is a combination of complex constellation points. So, then there are other uh, variables uh, which are also available. So, we are not using this much except a few of them from here. It is the uh, N mu CPL which is the cyclic prefix length and as you can see it is also configured with respect to mu. That means, uh, mu is described in the previous slide as one which specifies the sub carrier spacing. Uh, we had seen earlier that if T u is the T useful duration of the OFDM symbol, then this is related to delta f as 1 upon T u. Okay. And we have also seen that T g i is extension of the T u. So, generally this is some alpha fraction of T u, okay, some fraction of T u. So, here what is done is T g i is coupled with T u through the same parameter mu. So, n c p is the cyclic prefix length as you can see sub c p l indicating the length of it and mu indicating the, uh, the, the uh, sub carrier spacing uh, indication which is parameterized by mu. Okay. And uh, this is the resource grid side, uh, size, we will see it at a later, later stage and uh, out of these, uh, these definitions whatever we have we will again see them with example specific things that will be uh, clearer. So, as we can see in all cases uh, the number of slots per sub frame for a sub carrier configuration mu in the earlier lecture we have described that the number of slots is a function of uh, is a function of the sub carrier spacing which is different compared to the earlier generation where things were pretty much fixed. Okay. So, we will see all of these descriptions in the next few slide. Okay. All right. So, uh, when we go into the frame structure the way things are defined is uh, in a very systematic manner. So, fields in the time domain is expressed in units of T c. So, T c is the variable which defines the unit in terms of which things are defined. So, T c is 1 upon delta f max multiplied by n f. So, delta f as you can see is the sub carrier spacing or the sub carrier bandwidth and the maximum value of it is taken in the denominator. So, when you go 1 by delta f you get the chip duration and uh, it is. So, basically if you look at 1 by delta f max it is basically the shortest T u our T u which we have been describing as far as possible that is the OFDM symbol duration. And this is further divided by n f which is the number of sub carriers. So, if we look at this entire denominator term, denominator term is delta f max that is the maximum sub carrier bandwidth 
multiplied by n f. So, we will see what is n f. So, n f is number of subcarriers. So, together this gives a bandwidth indication and one by bandwidth is the chip duration or the clock duration which is useful. So, here delta f max is specified as 480 multiplied by 10 to the power of 3 hertz. So, 480 kilohertz. So, that means, uh, what we will see is that if we relate it in terms of mu delta f is 2 to the power of mu into 15 into 10 to the power of 3 hertz. So, this factor you will find that this goes into delta f mu by a factor of nearly 32. So, 15 it will go to 32 times that means, mu will take a value of 5 in this particular case. Okay. Achha. And n f is 4096. So, that means, 4096 uh, subcarriers are possible. So, you can multiply 480 kilohertz multiplied by 4096 to see the total span of sampling frequency as is available. Out of this entire bandwidth, the entire bandwidth is not used. We know that from fourth generation system, there are certain guard in guard band at the edges where there is no transmission, so as to avoid intercarrier interference. Okay. So, here we have done a calculation of these things, where we find out that the T c chip duration is turning out to be around 50 nanoseconds. So, it is 50.86 or it is 50 nanosecond. So, this uh, is equivalent to you can think of around 20 megahertz okay, in time I mean in the in the bandwidth domain. The T s which is again another parameter is uh, with respect to some reference value and here what we find is the reference value is 15 kilohertz and this reference value is the L T value and uh, 15 kilohertz with uh, 2048 subcarriers. So, there you will find that a T s turns out to be 325 microsecond compared to this. So, these numbers are from L T e. So, L T e system subcarrier spacing is 15 kilohertz and in the 20 megahertz it uses 2048 point F F T. So, with respect to the L T system the new fifth generation system is scaled in, in terms of time and bandwidth. So, this is a scaling factor or kappa which is used to describe such parameters. Okay. So, now comes the one of the most important and most interesting terminologies which have been uh, discussed uh, for quite some time and that is called numerologies. Okay. So, numerology is uh, nothing but the description of mu, mu is we have said describes the subcarrier spacing. So, what we see is that multiple OFDM numerologies are supported that is one of the statement and table below. So, basically this particular table describes the numerology. Okay. So, this particular table as you can see this is table 1 which describes the uh, numerology it effectively tells us that mu equals to 0 you can see from this expression it turns out to be 15 kilohertz and corresponding to this we will also find a cyclic prefix length which we will describe later on. So, as you keep increasing the value of mu simply by using this factor like 2 to the power of 1 is 2 multiplied by 15 is 30 kilohertz. Then when mu is 2 this factor is 4 this factor is 60 kilohertz. <coughs> so, what we find is that subcarrier spacing is increasing with increasing value of mu this is in contrast to the fourth generation system and since it is also OFDM only thing that changes is the subcarrier spacing. So, this subcarrier spacing change is controlled by this parameter mu. So, this configuration of OFDM for different subcarrier spacing is termed as numerology in OFDM and we have described in the previous uh, slide that the cyclic prefix duration is also coupled with mu which we will see shortly. So, through the use of mu one can describe the T C p or T g i as per our description that is the C p duration followed by T u which is equal to 1 upon 
delta f right. So, through one parameter that is mu one can describe the structure of a OFDM symbol and we had said in our notation earlier it was T s here T s is a different meaning. So, this is the total symbol duration as per our description of the OFDM symbol. So, we can say T s O f indicating OFDM symbol duration. So, this entire value can change based on the choice of parameter. Now, this choice of parameter mu and cyclic prefix are obtained from higher layer parameters. So, basically something which is above the, uh, the physical layer can provide you choice of these parameters. So, if these two choices are given then you can describe an entire OFDM symbol and earlier we have described uh, in, in several ways that how the choice of parameters are very important for successful deployment of a OFDM system and what we see over here is that this particular aspect is exploited in the fifth generation things are not kept constant. So, there is a lot of potential to exploit the capabilities of OFDM use it in a flexible manner as per the situation which is dependent on the propagation environment as well as the need or the environment. We have seen several scenarios and descriptions which have ended up in certain set of requirements and we will see how these different requirements can be met with this flexibility provided by OFTM. So, there is some definition of resource block we will see that we have described shortly earlier that the number of sub carriers in a resource block is 12. So, when we have these different sub carriers stacked against each other a group of 12 sub carriers would be called a resource block. Okay. The next consecutive will be another set of 12 sub carriers. So, if there are 1 0 if there are let us say 2 0 4 8 sub carriers in all of which a certain fraction is used and we divide by 12 we will find the number of resource block that is available. Now, if we divide 2 0 4 8 by 12 then we get a certain number, but not all those numbers are useful because out of 2048 in the entire spectrum we have said that certain numbers in the guard band are not used. So, only a smaller subset is used. So, that number has to be replaced in 2048 and we get the appropriate value of the resource block and that will depend upon the particular uh, spectrum and application scenarios. Right. Further one more thing is that uh, as we have said that in a particular uh, bandwidth suppose there is a certain bandwidth one can have narrow sub carriers we will see this one can have wider sub carriers we will see this. So, accordingly depending upon the value of mu the number of resource block is going to change right. There is also a definition of bandwidth part which says that bandwidth part is a subset of contiguous resource block for a given numerology numerology as we have said is the one which described through mu in a bandwidth part on a given carrier. A UE that is a user equipment can be configured with up to 4 bandwidth parts in downlink with a single downlink or uplink bandwidth part being active at a given time. So, at any one given time although you can divide the entire bandwidth into 4 parts from the UE definition parts perspective, but only one of them can be utilized at any one instant of time. So, this makes things a little bit easier from the UE implementation. Okay. So, now here uh, we are at the middle of everything one can think of. So, this particular uh, set of expressions describes the OFDM symbol that is being generated because we have said the 5G uses OFDM. So, what we find over here the continuous time signal S we have used such a S symbol earlier when we are discussing the symbol structure L in time domain P is the antenna port mu is the numerology T is simply showing the time unit. Okay. So, we do not have k over here because it is OFDM symbol. So, OFDM symbol as we had said earlier we can connect over here x of t is equal to in our notation what we had described earlier x s of k sum over k, k is the sub carrier e to the power of j 2 pi k t by e to the power of j k t by n one can think of it in this way or one can think of 1 e to the power of j 2 pi k n. So, when we are doing in terms of discrete you are going to get it as x s. So, our s would correspond to l over here k remains the k e to the power of j 2 pi k n upon n and of course, there is a gate 
which we should always have n minus s n s right. This is something which always had. So, now if we compare this we, we said earlier in one of the earlier descriptions that this a corresponds to the constellation point for OFDM otherwise it will co correspond to the com combination of the symbols. Say here we have the same thing again that x s if we compare these two equations now x t what we had written earlier corresponds to s l of t right. There is a certain antenna port parameterized by mu we will see that and here this particular symbol corresponds to the complex constellation ok e to the power of course, we have e to the power of j 2 pi. So, we have j 2 pi and then we have this k which is also k over here. So, this k is also having a k summation over there. Now, what we find is delta f being specified ok which is 1 upon n in our case or you can have uh, k multiplied by delta f in the other way. So, t corresponds to t the only difference that we have is delta f is specified as 2 to the power of mu multiplied by 15 into 10 to the power of 3 hertz right. This is the only uh, difference that is available in, in the system. So, so, here you can have delta f over here. So, which would indicate the spacing. So, here our description was for any given delta f ok, but here what we find is that uh, this particular delta f can take different values which is specified by the parameter mu. Rest of the parameters are constant parameters these are all constant parameters this is a shift which we had indicated earlier in our expression and we had said that it is for you to figure out how does these equations fit in. So, what we see over here is there is a n mu c p description and t c is also given in time and this is also an offset of t mu that is also described. So, rest of the parameters are constant. So, what we essentially see from here is that it is the same OFDM symbol, but with a delta f description which is 2 to the power of mu 15 kilohertz. The n mu c p description is given over here which is which can be used in order to calculate the value of delta f and in this description it is said that delta f is given in clause 42 of the document 38.211. So, if you go to clause uh, uh, 4.2 in the document uh, delta f is mentioned and delta f is described exactly over here in this particular clause. Okay. So, this is the primary foundation on which the uh, fifth generation system stands. So, it is very important that we take a look at it. So, in the next uh, particular slide we have actually given the exact description which we have provided in the previous slide that is uh, we have identified the, the exponential term we have identified it very very clearly that there is a k which gets multiplied with delta f and t in order to complete the OFDM signal generation and delta f in section 4.2 uh, we know that it is given as this expression. So, if we combine all of them we get the OFDM signal generation in the fifth generation system. So, one could also replace this entire set of values with uh, another variable delta f mu delta f sub mu to be defined in this manner and then one gets uh, s l mu which is the parameter over here being directly influenced in the equation. So, whatever we have described primarily tells that this subcarrier spacing or s c s can be easily read off as this particular value ok. So, that means, it tells one can choose different values of subcarrier spacing depending upon the parameter mu and which is a multiple of 15 kilohertz as we have been saying ok. So, this is the primary uh, um, you can say the most important uh, um, information or meaningful information in terms of the air interface for the fifth generation ok. So, when we look into the, the C p length, so we have uh, presented a calculation of C p length 
over here. So, from which what we find is that for different values of mu, uh, we will get different C p lengths. Okay. And what we see is that uh, we have two different uh, cases that means, when L is not equal to 0. Okay. So, when, what do we mean by L not equal to 0? Let us see that. So, when we look into the description, we find that C p is described in various manner. One is the extended cyclic prefix length, which is slightly longer as you can clearly see there is a multiplicative factor 512 compared to 144. Right. So, this is a larger multiplicative factor. This clearly means that C p length is longer compared to other C p cases. Okay. So, if the channel duration or the channel impulse response is large enough, so then one can use the extended cyclic prefix, otherwise one would use the normal cyclic prefix. But L which is the time index, so for L equals to 0 or L as the last symbol, one will find that there is a particular length of C p which is again larger than the case when it is not the boundary OFDM signals. Okay. If it is the boundary OFDM symbols, then the length is larger, whereas if it is not the boundary OFDM symbols, it is a different value. What it means is that there is a consecutive set of OFDM symbols that form a slot, which we will see short shortly. The first OFDM symbol and the OFDM symbol index for which it is equal to 7 into 2 to the power of mu, the value of C p length is given by this number in the middle for all other values it is given by this like a typical OFDM symbol is given by this. So, we have actually listed down the values of, uh, of C p uh, for the normal case in, in this and for the case where it is L is equal to 0 or 7 into 2 to the power of mu over here. So, what we find is that in all cases the number of samples in the C p has remained constant. However, uh, what we find is that uh, in the other cases the length of C p is different. Okay. But what we also see is that when we calculate C p there is a T c which comes into play. Right. So, this is just the number of samples which are being defined in the in the C p length, but one should also get a T c which is coming into play when one describes the C p length. So, as mu changes the C the T c would change the subcarrier spacing would change. Effectively, one will find that this product will give a different number and the values are going to be different, which we will see shortly. Okay. So, what we find is that the C p length accordingly takes different values as the mu value changes. So, what we see over here is as mu increases, subcarrier spacing increases. So, if subcarrier spacing increases, the T OFDM symbol duration would decrease and if T OFDM symbol would decrease since C p length is a fraction of the T OFDM symbol and hence that would also decrease. Now, very simple although it, it appears to be very, uh, very silly, but still what we see is if we would have kept the C p length of this value, whereas OFDM symbol duration has become this value and have combined this, we would find that the spectral efficiency would be less than 50 percent because this is the useful part which is 4.16 divided by 4.69 sorry it is it is uh, plus 4.16. So, what we find is that this fraction is less than 50 percent and spectral efficiency is less than 50 percent. So, what is done is instead a combination of values of T C p and T O F D M symbol is tied that means, they are coupled you can say that they are uh, fixed, you cannot change them. right? So, once you choose a value of mu, your value of subcarrier spacing and your C p gets defined. In other words, your entire OFDM symbol duration gets defined. right? So, by choosing a single parameter, you can change the entire OFDM structure and we have said earlier, how do these parameters affect each other. Okay. So, in, in terms of uh, numerology, what we find is that uh, effectively it means that there is a variable subcarrier spacing or variable subcarrier bandwidth either of the terms, which would otherwise mean 
that it is a variation in OFDM symbol duration and along with it there is a variation of the guard interval. Now, let me tell you that it is not necessary to have these things coupled together. It is not necessary to have this. This can be chosen independently. So, although we have said that uh, a combination of this CP length and this OFDM symbol is kind of meaningless, but technically speaking one may choose to do so depending upon the situation, but whether it gives appropriate benefit in terms of actual throughput is something one has to see. So, accordingly uh, one may find that this combination may not end up being fruitful in a particular situation. In that case it may be wiser to have a wider a longer OFDM symbol than the one that is given over here. However, uh, it is not true that this OFDM symbol should be always coupled with a fraction of TCP as given by this number. One may also decide to do with another number where efficiency is lower, but it serves the purpose. But in this particular standard, they have fixed up this combination of CP along with the OFDM symbol duration. So, at, at this point, uh, we stop this particular lecture because uh, in the next lecture, we will start to look at the exact frame structure. Uh, based on which we have the entire uh, air interface for 5G. So, uh, what we have effectively done is describe the OFDM signal generation uh, equations. So, if one is interested in generating the signals, one should follow them and now using all the descriptions that we have given so far, we will fit them into the frame structure and see how does it fit together. Once we are done with the frame structure, then we will be interested in looking at the philosophy or design issues, uh, why these have been chosen, what are the advantages and how, what kind of gains one can get, what are the possible architectures, what is the genesis, when, where from things have started in the subsequent lecture. Thank you.